kids, young adults. I don't care if it's a, an older adult. You come up here, you want to sing and praise God, just come up and praise God. As long as you're doing it for the right reason, you've got your heart into it. We're not up here to show off for ourselves. We're not up here showing off our voices, because trust me, like I said, you hear me without the music and you'll probably be going out of doors. But it's all about our heart and where it's at. You know what I mean? It's all about that. But tonight, it's kind of funny because I don't know if Pastor Sharky, I know when I started doing the, the proclaim, I didn't quite see the service yet, so I didn't know if he had his up or not, but kind of the same thing, but a different style. Um, I'm doing our faith through trials and temptations of life, because it's something that we're facing a lot of today, and even I am, even today I face. Excuse me. <laughs> so, have you ever had one of those days? You just didn't want to wake up. Didn't want to get up and do anything. I did. Didn't want to come into church. Didn't want to go into work. Didn't want to go to school. You just want to stay there and lay around. You think? Yeah, I have one each and every day, actually. But <laughs> today I'm going to talk to you about trials and temptations that we face in your life and what the Bible tells us about them. The verse I want to use today is the primary verse is James 1, verse 2 through 3. So again, it's James verse chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. It says, considering it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So again, consider pure joy that we're going through that. So how many times do we see that and we're up against the wall and we, we find ourselves struggling and we find joy in, in the outcome? The world we live in today is troubling in so many ways. So many ways. We have the war going on right now. I mean, just before the service, I was looking at the latest scene, how they have uh, civilian hospitals and, 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 and stuff being bombed now. And, and it's just it's a travesty what's going on over there. We've got COVID in the world, people fighting on both sides, trying to make their own side of the aisle as well on what should be done, what shouldn't be done. But we're not listening to the right thing. We're not listening to God's word. We're not listening to Christ calling us. We're listening to our Democratic or Republic side. We're listening to our, our, our friends or, or whatever it is. We're not listening to God. We're not opening our hearts to God. We're listening to the wrong thing. There's so much chaos all around us, even today, right here in our very own town, our very own homes. We have the fire going. Go ahead, brother. I really did think the war was going to be... Uh, starting since I was little. Unfortunately, yeah, it, it does. It happens. But but we got to keep it for God. You know, God, if we keep Him in our prayers, He is the one guy, the one thing, the one creator, our Father, that can take care of anything. And plus, so, I do feel safe in God's house. That's right. Amen, brother. Feel safe in God's house. And I hope that's why you're here tonight, to learn God's word, because you feel safe here among such people. But the trials and temptations often seem to come right out of the moment of joy of small victory. Right when we start to feel comfortable in the time that where we are in that particular time, and we're praising God, I could be up here singing praises to God on a Sunday morning or anything, then and just praising for all of it does, it seems like it starts to fade away. And like Pastor Sharky was talking about this morning, you start to have that little voice saying, you're worthless. You don't deserve this. You don't need to be here. You don't, God doesn't love you because you're not lovable. You start to hear these things. It starts to tug at you. And it starts to hurt. And I have many people that I've talked to and I know that have those same feelings. You hear it all the time. People say, I can't step foot in that church. It'll burn down. Well, I'm telling you, if I'm standing right here right now and the church isn't burning, it's not going to burn for you to come to this church. This is a life in the world. It requires a continuous and active choice to choose what? To choose God. Above all else, to choose God. To keep faith. To say, I'm sorry. <clears throat> to move ahead in hope rather than to dread and despair. To stay behind dreading everything that we've done and the cho choices that we made. It's easier said done than done. Um, I understand you saying it's easier just to say, okay, God, forgive me. Turn that off. It's kind of weird, a light going off with me speaking. <laughs> but everyone in 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. 
I think I said this in my last ser sermon that I preached here. Um, once you become a Christian, it's not all rainbows and butterflies and everything. It's not a perfect life. If you have a perfect life right now, you need to look at where you're at. Because uh, what did Pastor Shirley say this morning? The narrow gate is the one that leads to heaven. The wide gate is the one that leads to hell. Everything's all peachy and glory and you have nothing that's getting in your path. And Satan's leaving you alone for a reason. Then, again, Matthew uh, 24, 9 says, Then they will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Talking about God, Jesus Christ. Does this sound familiar? Is Christianity accepted today in the world? No. Christianity is still pushed aside while religions are allowed to have tolerance. You're not allowed to say anything bad about any other uh, any religious beings or religious sects whenever it comes to Christianity, we try to stand up somewhere and say, God loves you, we're shut down. We're told to shut up. It's not allowed. We're told we're not allowed to pray in school. We're not allowed to have our Bibles in, in school or at work. Go ahead, brother. I, my school lets me pray and uh, bring my Bible. Amen. Every, every time I get done with the computer, I read my Bible. Amen. You homeschool? No. Okay. <laughs> but you say every time you get done with your computer, that's what you're checking there. So, we need to make sure we're standing up and we understand that we're going to face these tribulations in time. We're going to face all this, but it's where we keep our faith in. So, in keeping our faith in hard times is number one. Living by faith. So, it's about the free will choice that we have in trusting God and choosing His way over our own. And it's about keeping that faith, not just in times of peace, but in times when life feels like chaos. Just like over there with the war, they have those bombs going around them and everything. We have spiritual warfare each and every day around us. It's chaos. It's chaos in life. That's why when we wake up in the morning, we're to pray. When we go to bed at night, we're to pray. When we're doing anything, we're to pray without ceasing. Including driving, just not saying, Jesus, take the will, you know, you keep your eyes open and you continue driving. But you still pray. You pray through your music, through listening to Christian music and praising God. These same songs we sung today, tonight, this morning, in this morning service, I listen to on the radio, I listen to on my phone. Jackie and I listen to when we're traveling, and we're praising God through it. We're keeping our faith and lifting God up through His Word. I'd love to say I get it right all the time, though, but I don't. I really don't. But I want to. In fact, just after being told to preach this very sermon about faith, I really, really wanted... Go ahead, brother. Oh, what are the songs that we listened to today? Well, I'll tell you after the service. We'll go through them. We have four of them we listen to, okay? Okay. Thank you. But uh, just after being told to preach this very sermon, though, about faith, uh, and genuinely I wanted and I desired to preach... I felt riddles with trials and tribulations. I didn't get a position at work that I felt that I deserved, that I worked really hard for. Matter of fact, I ended up getting a devotion over all of it. That was me down. <coughs> Big time depression. I just had a family member diagnosed with cancer. Can't say who right now, but it's someone that's close to me that hurts. We had a former youth of this very church ended up passing away recently. Most of you know why and what happened. One that I was close to when he was here in the youth because he worked with me right up here doing youth choir, the youth praise team. He was even a part of the youth, uh, sorry, skits and stuff that we did. And it's hard to see things like that happen, especially when you're up here night after night preaching God's Word, the very Word that will lead you out of what you're suffering from at that very moment. So much more has happened in just this one week. In each situation, though, it seemed like I could see the problem right there in front of me. And it seemed like I could get over it so easy. But even I can handle 
only so much. You know, I started to feel everything in the breakdown. I think, and I'm sorry, I get emotional, so forgive me. But why do I get these thoughts, even as a minister standing up here before you? Yes, even I feel the time that it's time to just give up. But then it's those times the Holy Spirit takes a hold of me and says, no, because it's on my time and you're following me and listening to me. This is my ministry, not yours. <clears throat> the life that I live is a life that I'm living for God, not for myself. Even though at times, I'll be honest, I can be one of the most selfish people around. I really can. And it's a flaw that I have. Each of us go through tough times. Think about your own life. People you know. What are some of the difficult times that you or your other friends may have faced? How do you feel when you see others going through these hard times? What types of hard situations do you see them facing each and every day? Now, if you could sum up all the pain and emotion, what words would you choose? I wish that I could say all these things happen and the hurt just doesn't exist, but it does. Like I said at the very beginning, I can't promise you a perfect life as a Christian because that's not what the Bible says. It plainly says we're going to be under persecution. But I can promise you that God will never fail you if you say in His Word. Jesus Christ is a good shepherd. When we ask Him into our heart, He showers us with unconditional, unconditional love. There is no strings attached. He loves you just like He loves me. He's not saying that you got to be some other person. He just says, accept me. Know who I am. Turn away from this world. Turn away from the sin. Accept me. He wants to share and shower, shower, shower you full of so much love. It's a, I couldn't even explain if you don't know right now and haven't felt it. He does not leave us. He's a, he sees us over and over again, and he sees us struggle with a desire to grow closer to him. We truly have nothing to fear. He is the only one who will never let you down. Go ahead, brother. Uh, don't, don't God want you to uh, go up there instead of down there? Go up where? Heaven? Oh, yes, yes. He wants you to be with him. He does. In heaven. You're right. Yes. I had a... Uh, Grandpa that died a couple of last year. Grandpa passed away. I'm sorry, brother. Yeah, I think you told me that before we prayed for you. Yes, sir. And I pray that he made the choice to where he could be in heaven as well. I didn't know your grandpa, but I pray for you. Okay. So number two. Staying strong in the Word. Staying strong is easier said than done as well. I know I was just talking with Chad, uh, an old friend of ours who used to come here the other night. He used to be this little scrawny guy, and if he was watching on here, I'm sorry, but this little scrawny police officer that you really would think that someone could just flick and knock him over. You know what I mean? He was small. He would eat. <laughs> It, I mean, I remember I went over to uh, Miss Betty and Mr. Paul's house the other night and we were eating cheesecake and talking with them and I was like, yes, I cheated. I had cheesecake. But I was looking and I said, that's not fair. I said, here he is. He used to eat all these snack cakes every day, zebra cakes, just to try to get gain weight. For his birthday, Tiffany would buy the little 12-pack of the zebra cakes and put the candles in them and he would eat them. So, yeah. <laughs> but... I told him it's not fair. And now he's this big guy. He's buff. But he didn't get there through just eating everything or whatever. It was through discipline. He followed strict guidelines. And he was going through telling me, what? how many calories does he eat today? Two thousand. He eats a thousand by 10 a.m. A thousand calories by 10 a.m. <coughs> you know, and then the, the things that he does to do this, you know, I mean, the Focusing on each body part and stuff, but that's the same thing we got to do here. Same thing right here. It's no different. It's just 
we're flexing our heart muscle. We're building our strength in Christ. But we've got to be disciplined. We've got to stay in His Word. We've got to stay on our knees in prayer. We've got to be out there and practicing what we're supposed to do, exit to serve. What does that mean? We've got to be practicing going out there and spreading God's Word, however God's leading you to do so. No temptation, this is 1 Corinthians 10.13, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. We wonder what our out will come, what that way out will be. A lot of times half-heartedly because whenever we look at it and we say our way out that God's given us in this time, we just rely saying God's going to do it so I don't have to do anything myself. Hmm? Are we praying? No. <laughs> but, right there, right at that moment, that's where our spiritual battle begins. In the exact moment, keeping the faith means everything. Can I believe God? Or should I believe what I see based on what I see day to day in the world? You should believe God. Amen. Amen. There's that moment to choose, and often we have to go against everything that feels natural because what feels natural to us is this flesh, sin, the sinful nature of the world. But we're to choose the good news. We're to choose that God is always there with us, and He's helping us. Even in the New Testament, uh, he had his fair uh, Paul had his fair uh, share of tough times in 2 Corinthians 11. Uh, verse 23, it says, I, uh, through 27, it says, I have worked harder, been put in prison more often, been whipped times without number, and faced death again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced dangers from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and have gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 9 says, We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile uh, clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles. But we are not crushed, we are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we're not destroyed. Paul doesn't diminish or discount our pain that we go through. He felt it. He felt trouble. He felt what he was going through. But listening into his words, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down but not destroyed, we are never left alone. Amen. Life is hard. Our world and the people in it can be cruel. Matter of fact, this week we actually had uh, I had someone that didn't want to be a part of a service because of the way they were being treated, which hurt me very bad. Because I never want to see somebody leave a service because of some of the way a fellow youth or kid or whatever it is is treating them. Doesn't matter if you're a doll or what. And in that, that hurt me because I had to talk to this kid and try to get them, talk them into staying to hear God's word, where they felt they were being persecuted by their own peers right there within the same group. We don't need that, especially here in the church today. Paul reminds us with his image of a jar of clay that life can be really hard. 
And it can sometimes leave us feeling all these things like depressed, alone, confused. But with Christ, we are not ever destroyed. We are always right there with Him. He's always by our side. Paul's strength came from God's Word, and guess what? It never dies or fails. 1 Peter 1.25 says, But the Word of the Lord endures forever. Forever. And this is the Word that I'm preaching to you right now. That very Word will never die. Even when I'm longing on. Somebody's still going to be here unless the Lord's come and taken us to glory. Still preaching His Word. Because it never dies. It's living. And this is the Word right here in 1 Thessalonians 2.13 says, For this very reason we also constantly thank God that when you received the Word from God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a word of men, before what it really is, the Word of God, which also performs this work in you who believes. In Psalms 18.30 says, As for God, His way is blameless. The Word of the Lord is tried. He is a shield to all who take refuge in Him. I can get verse after verse saying, God's Word is perfect. I can give us after verse saying everything that God's Word says, and we can be here all night long. I'm sure you all don't mind that, right? Amen. All right. But I want you to know you have a Father in Heaven who only wants you to turn to Him and say, I love you. I know I said that earlier, but I'm going to say it over and over, and I'll say it every time I'm up here. Say, I choose you, Lord, and not the world. Forgive me, Lord, for I'm a sinner and I want to be made clean. I want to believe in you, Lord, and I ask you now to enter my heart and make me new. With that very prayer, you could end up being a Christian. If you truly understood and you believe what God is. You want to turn from your sin and you truly want to repent. The meaning of trials and tribulations are why we go through the peaks and valleys that we see are right there in that 1 Peter 3.17 though. For it's better if God should will it so that you suffer for doing what is right rather than for doing what is wrong. Coming to know God and staying in His Word is always what is right. Staying in His prayer is always what is right. Leading someone to Christ is always what is right. If we keep our mouth shut and don't open our mouths, I constantly talk about testimonies. But it's because if we don't give our testimonies, then there's someone that could be lost out there that could have been saved from that testimony. Someone that could have been drawn near to Christ. Or someone that could have had that plant, that seed planted in their life. Number three, and then we're almost done, I promise. Let adversity make you a better person. There's a story I came across that says a woman fighting a battle with cancer was enduring pains, a heartache that few people understood. She remained cheerful and also optimistic. She wrote her own obituary, which in part reads, Today at the young age of 33, I left this mortal existence to a holier sphere. I was born to wonderful parents who taught me to live life well. We have three sweet children who I will miss greatly. At the young age of 29, I was introduced to something called cancer. Cancer was my greatest adversary. But I have learned that it is life, sorry, uh, that in this life, our enemies can become our clo uh, choicest friends. The secret is learning what to do with the conflict. In that story, we're not always healed from our pains and sickness. I've mentioned Miss Marla with her miracle of healing that God's done. We see Pastor Sharkey where he's been through cancer twice now and beat it. We don't always see that. Well, you could be on your knees praying to God and it's not always going to be that our loved ones are healed. My grandpa, I got on my knees and prayed I don't know how many times. <coughs> And he still passed away from Alzheimer's and dementia. But God answered my prayers in a different way. 
Because if y'all know my testimony about my grandpa, pray to God he came to know him before he died. Someone you would have never thought. I mean, someone who believed in aliens and other planets and had all these things that had nothing to do with the Bible, but yet could quote the Bible inside and out to you and twist the words in ways that try to, to make you understand and uh, uh, that, that goes against your beliefs. But no matter how much I prayed, I kept seeing his health decline. But it's the day before he passed away, or before he went in a coma, where I was hugging him and I was praising God for leading him and planting that seed, then he started patting my back, saying it's okay. Sorry. So even through his Alzheimer's and dementia, God still gave him the capability of letting me know and reassurance, I'm going to glory. Yielding to adversity. Sorry. Makes us weaker. Keeping the commandments no matter how trying makes us stronger. It helps us overcome every challenge in life. Through faith and obedience, we qualify for the divine spiritual guidance that we need to guide us along the unknown roads. Like I said this past Wednesday, I was disappointed, but we understand, kids, but you've got to understand, you don't know what people are going through. You don't know what they have going on in their own lives. You've got to lift each other up. That's what we're here for as Christians. We're lifting each other up. We're holding each other accountable. We're loving each other. Just like Christ loved the church. If someone says, I love God, but hates another Christian, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God who we have not seen? First John 4 20. We need to lift each other up. But you know what? It starts right here in this very sanctuary. We don't need to put people down. There's too much hate in the world today. Too much pain caused by so-called Christians. Did you know that, and this is something I looked up for this and, I, and it blew my mind, but suicide rate right now is that out of 16 out of every 100,000 people will die by their own hands. Now I know 16 out of every 100,000 doesn't sound like a lot, but that's not a, a year. That's not a month. That's 16 every 40 seconds. Now, sorry. <laughs> I just had a friend die from that way, so please forgive me. Now, is that number large enough for you? We need integrity. And not just in church, but when we leave these very doors. The world, believe it or not, relies on you each and every day. There are people looking for you and wanting to know what you have, where you're from, what you're doing. <sighs> Do you know why? Because they know that you've been given a job to deliver God's word to them. Even though social media, even the social media people, I know there are people on there like Hunter, where he's got a TikTok. He was telling me he had a hundred and how many thousand views on one of your 162,000 views on one of his TikToks. And he gets out there and spreads God's word on it. Talking about God and how much he loves you. But I want you to know don't give up. Because I know the pain you go through with some of the comments you get. I want you to go up understanding that you're going to face persecution. And there's some very mean people out there. But God will prevail keep the faith. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and of discerning the thoughts of intentions of the heart. Stay in God's word. He will not fail you. We need to be patient. Sorry. Bear with me. We live in a world full of instant gratification. We want things quickly, and I've said this in prior sermons before over and over, 
We want fast food. We want it happen now. Even with our miracles, pray. We want it now. We want forgiveness now. We want everything gone. Though we're focusing on the wrong thing. But again, that's for another sermon. We have, we have tonight to focus on faith. I have several different things that God's been laying on my heart to give. Matter of fact, I had a, another sermon for this one that I already had written, and I was telling Jackie this would be an amazing sermon for it, and God kept tugging my heart to talk about this tonight. And whenever He does that, I, I, I'll be honest, I put my head down, I shake my head, I'm like, I've got this already prepared. I, Come on, Lord, please, let me do that next time. But then He puts somebody in your life that tells you the right thing to do, or he leads you with the Holy Spirit saying, no, you're going to do this and shuts the door on the other. So, I needed to be patient even within this sermon. While I was writing, while I was studying everything I was doing for it. We live in a world that we look at that's full of people saying they're full of faith. But that faith isn't what the Bible is asking. Because he says, well, even the faith of a mustard seed, that very, very small seed. I was in the store. Jackie has a bottle of mustard at home that she, that's nothing but seeds. And I was able to see all the little seeds, how small they are. And it's amazing. But I can tell you, the world today doesn't even have faith that small. Because the world's looking at themselves and their own selfish needs. God will reveal in us a greater understanding about our trials and the purpose of them. Even in death, they can be used for good. They can be used for its glory. Now, I can't sit here and tell you why my family member has cancer right now. I can't tell you why Miss Marla had to go through her cancer when she was here. I can't tell you why Pastor Sharkey had to go through what he had to go through. What I can tell you is this. Each and every one of them have a testimony now. Each and every one of them has touched lives. Even to the point of Pastor Sharkey said when he was in Tampa, he had nurses saying that they would watch the sermons and stuff with him. He touched their lives. Planting that seed. The seed has been planted tonight with God's Word. Will you respond? A couple of weeks ago, Pastor Sharkey asked all of you who had been baptized as far as the youth, and uh, only one person raised their hand, and it hurt my heart that you didn't quite understand everything. I want each and every one of you to go to heaven. I want each and every one of you to be the Christian that God called you to be. Well, we're going to have an invitation tonight. We normally don't on Sunday nights, but I've got a song queued up that we're going to have for it. And we'll go through the whole song. And I'm going to stand out here and sing it with you because I'm going to be right there praying myself. If you want to come up and you can't, sit with me and pray. Pastor Sharkey is available, or anybody here. All is confidential. But I want only the best for each and every one of you. And I want to make sure that God leads you to listen to what Pastor Sharkey has to say and what the word is that's being preached up here. And I want to make sure you understand. And I want to make sure the one day that you're in glory in heaven or you have that opportunity. I want to leave you with a full Bible, a few Bible verses to help you in keeping your faith when you're feeling weak. If you want these verses afterwards, you can come to me and I can give them to you. But uh, The Lord is my light and my, uh, and my salvation. In whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalms 27.1 Psalms 105.4 says, Look to the Lord in His strength. Seek to face, seek His face always. Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Acts 27.25 says, So keep, your, uh, keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as He told me. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, Be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. 
2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more glad about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And the last one I'll read for tonight is Psalms 23. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for my own name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare your table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God is here. Stay strong in faith. Stay strong in His Word. Be in prayer, but lean on each other. Lift each other up. Starting right here, right now, we need revival to take over Fountain. And not just Fountain, but Bay County. And not just Bay County, Florida, the United States, the world. Revival is needed. And it starts with us right here, right now. Go ahead, brother. And we need to try stopping the war. That's right. Be in prayer. He said we need to try stopping the war. So, tonight for our invitation, like I said, we're just going to have a, a song up here. And I'll stand up here and I'll, I'm going to sing with the front pew. And if somebody wants to come forward and ask about Christ or pray or anything, feel free. And I'm sure Pastor Sharkey won't turn you away if you want to come and see him in the back. But let's go ahead and stand as we sing. <laughs>